Everything's changing again, and we're completely revamping our starter base. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time, we built a huge coal factory that solves our power issues for pretty much the rest of the early game. And started what will be our first mega project, our travel pipes. Which is going to work as a vast travel network between all of our bases that we build throughout the world. However, big projects come with big problems, and unfortunately, this entire coal plant I built last time doesn't measure up properly with the main base. So, uh, we got a bit of a problem here, and things aren't centered properly, and my OCD is going nuts. However, up here, we managed to hide the problem very, very nicely, and Pretty much everything looks fantastic, except for this one misaligned platform, which you just can't unsee. And due to the setup of our coal factory here, this is the only place the pipe can be, so we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. There was one solution though that might work out, and that was just deleting all the platforms underneath the travel pipes here, and then replace the platforms just with these walkways. But no matter how you slice it, you can still see it's not centered. So what we're just gonna do is delete pretty much this whole tower on the coal plant here. Like it looks really good without the tower, right? And it makes it so that this project doesn't misalign future projects afterwards. So yeah, we're not gonna connect our travel pipe to the coal plants here. And that kinda sucks, but then there's not much of a reason to travel here anyway, so whatever, no big deal. But we'll get to deleting that whole thing a little later on. Because right now, oh brother, we have a lot more decorating to do. Because we moved the space elevator last time as well, way over there, and now have pretty much a new front of our base to make. Like, <laughs> it just looks like this. But now we have all the options in the world, baby, and can make it look fantastic. Number one though, we gotta get rid of the platform that the space elevator used to sit on down here. So adios. And then number two is Mio and Tuo. Hey guys. It's time to move again to your new home. So do you have any presents? Copper ore, thanks buddy. And a purple power slug. Ooh, they are excited to move. I guess they didn't really like this box all too much. But don't worry guys, your new home is going to be much, much better. We just gotta build it first. Ooh, and I think they're gonna like this, but a new corner front office right in our base. So we're extending the floors all the way out to here, just beside the road. And what we can do is just add in the skyscraper walls right along here. And the doggos can always look out and see our space elevator. So remember to leave a like for our new doggo condos. Oh yeah, now look at this. Much, much better than this little box. All right, Mio, Tuo, let's scoot. Come on, come on. Good boys, over here now. Good, good, good. And welcome to your new home. I'll bring you guys some toys to play with later on, but for now, we are moving. So just sit tight, okay? I'll be back. Okay, and now the doggos are in their huge new corner suite, it's time for us to make a move too. Because instead of our uh, hub being way on that side of the base, I wanna have it on this side of the base. Like, look at the view here. I actually really like the space elevator there, the waterfalls, the cliffs. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. And I guess we'll turn this like back area into a balcony. Just so we can overview our progress and some other things. But yeah, it'll be nicer to have our hub up in the front. And also, I have a crazy good looking plan for it too. Oh yeah, in one second, I gotta clear my inventory. There we go. So happy we have the large storage containers. But anyway, you come with me. And okay guys, here is the crazy big brain strategy. We have the hub right front and center of the base with the rocket facing forward. Look at that! Then whenever we see the base out of view, we always see the rocket right up front! Beautiful, right? Then we have windows going up, we have the next floors like built around the rocket there, 
It's just gonna look so cool. It really puts the ship on like a pedestal here. And also having the hub up here is really functional too. Because with the hub here, we have our travel pipe over there, main storage and stuff that way, and our doggo's right beside us. It's all so efficient. It's all so clean. And all so underdeveloped. So I'm gonna spend some time and add in the rest of the floors, add in a couple walls, and we'll try and make it look a little less uh, poopy when we walk in. All right, all right, so it's still not 100% there yet, but I think we have a solid foundation and idea going here. Oh, once the glass is all the way up, brother, that's gonna look so sick. However, I had some measurement issues and these floors are gonna be like three wide and the bottom floor, like the kind of outcroppings are too wide. I don't know if that's gonna be weird, like go moving into the future here and building this tower taller. But you know what, I think we could design it in some cool way. Once the windows are added anyway. Also, look at this! It's like another spine, except it's for me! <laughs> so instead of an item spine, it's another bounce pad elevator. Just snuck in the middle here. Also can sneak the power in too. And there we go! So now we have two bounce pad elevators in the base. For extra convenience. But also we kind of need the two because I split the bases up. Because they didn't line up like perfectly even, I was just like, well, whatever then. This side can be the production end, this side can be like the refining end. Like we can have all of our, what are they called? Assemblers over here. And like we can make our modular frames and reinforced iron plates here. And it's a different kind of cool area. So that should work out well. And also, oh! Last episode I mentioned I want there to be lots of bridges throughout this world. Like, not only with the travel pipe, but with trains and with like item belts, everything. Bridges going everywhere! And we'll get a small taste of that here too, as we'll have all of the item bridges bringing everything across. Like you just gotta use a little imagination right now, but like windows all the way up here, seeing all the belts crossing. Oh, it's gonna be sick! Almost as thick as our new storage area! Beep, 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 beep. Just threw a bunch of bins over here, put a wall over it, but it looks so good, right? You better believe it. And this is storage for like, random stuff. So like, biofuel, plant stuff, just things I don't need auto-refilled. We still have the auto-refilling area, or what will be the auto-refilling area, over here. So this is like for the wire, the concrete, and all the rest of the jazz. And then overall, I gotta say, this looks significantly better than having the hub just tucked away in the back of the starter base. This is sick. This actually looks really, really cool. And I'll finish off the walls in a little bit. But we have another big project we have to do before that. So you know how I mentioned our auto-refilling bins? Well, unfortunately right now, they don't auto-refill. However, I want to build all the production for them, so they do auto-refill. And we don't have to run through like different factories and stuff like that to get new items and all that kind of jazz. Because we use all these things so much, we always need them on hand. So that's kind of going to be our next project today. We're going to automate all of the basic things again. So our bins auto refill and that'll set us up for making more complicated things for the future. And also good news here, but I actually finished off all the smelters we need during the live stream. So we can go right to constructing things. But first off, we're gonna need our constructor pattern. Because with the more factory mod, we have so many more options to make things more different and cool. Like with our smelter array, we have the load balancing or the overflow stuff going on underneath the smelters and the smelter on top, all thanks to this new foundation. Look at that, everything works out fantastic. And now I wanna do something up here, but with constructors. So let's mess around a bit here. So before, we were using these foundations for the smelters. Because the smelters only really took up half of this platform. Oh, goodness gracious, that's tall, brother. Let me up! Good. The problem though with constructors is they take up the whole platform. And they cost different materials. There we go. And yeah, since they take up the whole platform, that's kind of fine, except for one little problem. The pillars underneath this platform type because we don't want to build our splitters and mergers underneath and have the pillar going through them. Like, it's completely hidden once everything's in place, but 
it's still kind of weird, you know? So I don't want to use this foundation. But I still want to try and do a pattern like this. I guess another option then would be this one. It's uh, quite a bit taller though. Oh, but now we have this problem with the legs. Because I still want to have the splitters and mergers underneath. So like, input goes in here, goes up the lift, goes out here, merges onto the line. But uh, <laughs> it's pretty clear to see. We got a problem, brother. Or at least we would, if not for the industrial platform. Oh my goodness, this thing looks sick. So it's kind of like the foundation, except with nothing in it. And this would be perfect, but it doesn't have a floor. <laughs> well then again, we can always just add one. And then look at that. It's beautiful, brother. But now hold up, hold up. I think I have to change the order of operations here. So let's build the splitter and the merger first, and then can we build this on top? Of course we can. Good. And then the foundation here should fit over top, of course. So that's one problem solved. But the real question is, will it blend? <laughs> or actually, will it work? So we can get a conveyor lift through this platform. I don't know... Well, if it connects like that, it should actually send the items through. I just want to do a really, really quick test to see if the whole system does actually work. So that presumably connects down there. We have a belt going out. And then what can we make? What's on the list? Screws? Sure. So let's just see if things will be this easy. In fact, we didn't even have to add in like a belt on the beginning or the end there. So like, this could be the best pattern ever. Ooh, and it's already going... Oh yeah! And it's going through the system here. But did it leave the system? It does le Oh my gosh, it does leave the system. This is even better than the furnace array. And holy, what an awesome looking machine this is too, man. Looks tough. And it really got that industrial feel to it. Right on. So we got the solution. Now we just have to plug in some numbers. And here's what we're dealing with. We have all of our smelters, right? And I have a row like this of 11 smelters hooked up to each of our nodes that are around the base. So this your iron node, for example, might be hooked up to this row of smelters. And this row of smelters, at current capacity, could produce 330 iron ingots per minute. And for the base down here, the only iron things we really need are these iron plates and iron rods. So I guess I'll just have a floor for iron rods and a floor for plates? Sure. And then one more floor for our copper stuff, like the wire and the cable. Okay, yeah, that seems like a plan then. So I guess then we'll have like three floors of constructors, each floor having two rows of 10 constructors? Yeah. And then we'll bring up items based on processing demand. But we'll figure out those numbers later. Because this is like the overflow method, right? We'll always be able to use power shards to fix any uh, production discrepancies. Or if things get a little too spicy. So we should be all good. Right on, right on. So the first rows of constructors are built and we are using uh, the double overflow method where the overflow will go through five constructors on one side, five on the other, and output to their own little special mergers. So we have four outputs here. We can combine them into one or do whatever we really want with them. We just have the options. However, everything's been going all good, but now we kind of have to deal with the uh, Giant moth in the room. Because we're at that point, eh? Yep. Yep, we are. And there's really only one option. We're gonna make some type of airport floor with pillars in it. So first off, we'll fill out the floor. And now pretty much we are going to do what we did in one of our first episodes. And we're just gonna add big pillars in. This way... There should be enough room for the moth to like squeak through here without hitting anything. And also, we did this big pillar thing way at the bottom of our base, right? So we know this will measure out properly. At least it should have. Oh wait, yeah it did. One, two, three, and oh yeah. One, two, and three. Okay, so yeah, it measures out perfectly, and this will be fine. Right on. And so it doesn't look like super weird. I guess we'll just add in like a box into the middle. I don't know what we're gonna put in the box, but it'll just add some depth to the build. 
and that should be good. Now, ideally, we could have made like an airport out of this whole thing, but when the moth flies through here, it's flying up like a huge angle, so it hits the bottom of the hill there, starts angling upwards, up, 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 and then by the time it's flying through our base, it's on this like weird trajectory. And we can't just like walk onto the moth like we did in our other base. Okay. But maybe there's an opportunity to jump on. I don't know. But it's really weird. And now as you can see, now it's starting to fly down and then it levels out. Or not. It's going up, it's going down, it's going all around. This moth has no chill. But whatever. It clears this area and that's all that really matters. Actually, since we're here now, you know, let's go for a little ride. We haven't ridden this moth before, I don't think, so let's check things out. See our beautiful world. Even since we won't have an airport with this guy, may as well take him for a spin once in a while, right? Ooh. And we can also spot for any shiny, shiny, shinies to get later. Or just enjoy the view for a bit. Ooh. Actually, no, this is really handy. Limestone node over there. Ooh, Slugarino boy. And actually, are we gonna be okay? No, we're not falling off, okay. I was worried we might be like sliding off this guy. But now we're all good. And please tell me he's gonna go through all the loops, right? Or it. Yeah? No? Oh yeah, brother, this moth knows what's up. We're riding in style, my dudes. Ooh, look at that big old cave there. Hmm. We really gotta go exploring one of these days. So much to see around here. I'm not really familiar with the area, too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. <gasps> Purple Sluggo boy. I'll be back. Don't you worry. Ooh, there was our starting area. Wait, what? We fly around this? <laughs> oh, Moth, you're tempting me. You're tempting me. But now, let's fly out this way. And instead, look at our beautiful base here. Fog zero. There we go. Now we can see the base. And this waterfall. Wait, doesn't it dive here? Eh, no matter. The base is great! And we're staying on this thing just fine. Ooh, are those sulfur nodes? Pretty, pretty. And actually though, our base, once the glass is filled in, oh my gosh, it's gonna look so good. Make this thing like twice as tall. Oh, and the freaking pipes going around everywhere. Our coal plant, it's beautiful. This new multi-base design, such a good idea. I think we'll have to switch the, the directions of some of them though. Like this one being facing forward, this one facing forward. It's a little weird, but we can make it work. And this looks really good too. Just have to add in all the walls there. Oh my gosh. We're gonna have the best looking base in the world. But anyway, still have lots to build, lots to do. Trying to kidnap me, Moth? Brother. <laughs> anyway, we still have lots to do, lots to build, and then we'll start organizing where our items are going. Okay, so a billion constructors have been constructed, and now, item time. So this is the uh, top floor here, and there's only really one way we can do this. And that's just bring all the items up and down through the spines on the side of our base here. I actually already got the copper and set it up as an example here. So let's just safely go down there, without dying. Well done me, thank you me. <laughs> And we'll have the two copper lines though, because I got a node way over there now. So there's one node going into all of these constructors, and another node going into these constructors. And pretty much up from the spine, off onto a belt, splits up between the two groups of five here and there, as does the one on the other side, and then all of this stuff will end up in the middle here. And all of these constructors will be making wire. Just wire. If we need cables in some kind of project, then we'll make cables over there. I think it's gonna be easier if we just keep all the wiring in this spot for now. And then downstairs for loading up our bins for resupplies, maybe we'll have a constructor or two down there. But yeah, that's the general plan. 
and it should work out quite well. And since all of this is going to be for wire, come on, there we go. We're pretty much already done, actually. We just hook up the final belts, and uh, things are moving, and things will be grooving. Slowly at first, but it'll garner speed. Soon, soon, soon. So round two here, I think we're just gonna make iron rods here. Yeah, sure, why not? Doesn't really matter. Iron rods or iron plates, it's one or the other. Only real big issue with this whole project is just bring things up and down, as our base has already gotten pretty dang tall. But we've dealt with worse, of course. Oh yes, the only minor problem is because of the moth, it's on this trajectory, right? So this floor is a little bit smaller than the others. So from the spine, the items will just have to loop around into this wall, and not come through here. Or wait, what am I talking about? Of course they can come through this wall. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm crazy. This moth, man. It's already driven me nuts. <laughs> Oh yeah, and keep in mind with everything, we're still trying to make things look good. And aside from our very beautiful repetitive designs, another thing we're trying to do is just make the areas walkable. I'm counting that as like looking good. Like there's paths to get from our elevator over here to like any point in this area without jumping over belts. At least that's the goal. Like some places are kind of unavoidable, but generally speaking, it's all walkable. That's the idea. So every floor is gonna look a little weird, like over here. We can obviously just bring a belt, plug it in over there, GG easy. But so we can actually walk through the area, we're gonna be adding in conveyor lifts, so you know, there's a place to walk. And it kinda adds on like an extra little challenge. Completely unnecessary, but a fun little challenge nonetheless. Alrighty though, that is Iron Rods complete leaving just one more item, the iron plates. And we're just gonna follow the same principles as the floor below. Right on, right on. All set up, all ready to go. Easy peasy. It's like we've done this before. Hmm. <laughs> okay, okay though. As for uh, bringing stuff down now, we have four outputs for all of these constructors. And today we really just wanna work on our storage area. So we're not gonna worry about all this nonsense, and we're just gonna scoop this one line and uh, bring it on over here. Then send it up, bring it over, and then bring it on home. And we do that with the other two items. Wait, what? Oh, that was weird. Why did it only bring down four? Dunno! But yeah, we only need to bring down the iron plates, the iron rods, and the wire at the moment. And then once the gang's all here, we just throw them into the bins. G-G-E-Z. With the one little caveat being the wire that's gonna scoot over here and turn into a little cable. And now that's that. We finally live in a society with self-refilling bins. Meaning we can actually get stuff done very efficiently. And no more bin messes all around the world. Cause oh my gosh, that was getting old. Real quick. Real quick. Oh my goodness, and you know what? I completely forgot to mention. The concrete. Uh, <laughs> I did this on a live stream, so pretty much same dealio as all the other things we just did today. Yeah. Concrete's dealt with though. It's auto refilling too. So yeah, we pretty much have all the basics here. However, I want to do one last thing here. And I just want to fill in the walls to the new front of our base, just to see how it looks, because oh my gosh! I know it's gonna look amazing. Oh my goodness, and what a hyper good idea finishing off the front of the base! Wow. This looks sick. And this is only our starter base, man. This is only the starter base. Oh man. And here it is again without the fog. But hey, let me know what you think! There's always room to add extra spice. But anyway though, that's gonna be all for today, so thank you guys so much for watching, and have a fantastic rest of your day! So take care, and bye bye